Welcome, everybody, to the Nightly News Podcast. This is Professor Paul Miller, and as always, one of my favorite guests, a man of many hats here at Central Penn College, um, but we are here speaking with podcast veteran Curtis Volker. Curtis, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much, Paul. I have to hire you as my personal hype man. I always love the introductions. Well, we, we, uh, we always try to make our guests feel welcome, um, especially because I believe... Gosh, you've probably been on five or six different podcasts over the years. I'm trying to reach Adrian Thoman's status. It, you got a long way to go because she's on, you know, a couple times a term. But, but of course, we'll continue to have you on, especially once we make our announcement about what the 2022 Raise the Roof campaign is going to be about. But that's what we're here talking about today: is the Raise the Roof campaign that has been going on here at Central Penn for about what nine months now. We've been working on this, and it's finally come to a close. So we're going to talk about some of the things that we've learned and some of the things and the organizations that we've supported uh, throughout this process. Also being joined by nightly news reporter Sarah Whitmire. Sarah, welcome back to the show. This is your second time around this term. Yes, it is. And we're glad to have you. And And certainly we hope that you're able to, to share with us a little bit more about your volunteer experience and things like that. Why don't we start there? Okay. What, what are some of the things that uh, in your past that you've done or, or some causes that you're interested in and maybe how this Raise the Roofs kind of spoke to you in, in whatever way it did? I guess... Uh, probably goes back to my church background because I grew up in church and we were always about giving to the community. As I've grown up, I've been exposed more to different causes and different uh, situations that have made me want to go and give back. And lately it's been uh, giving back to, I guess, the LGBTQ community and uh, everything that they stand for. And yeah, it's just basically my thing has been wanting to write about them and have them be heard in their voice be amplified more. And you now have an outlet to do that through the nightly news as well. Yes. I also know that you're an animal lover. Are you involved yes. with any animal related charities? Um, no, as of right now I'm not, but I would really love to get involved more with um like ESAs, uh having them be more validated. Um, I know that there's are some places that don't accept emotional support animals because they don't qualify as a quote unquote support animal. You know, I, I always found that very interesting about how some of these things, legalities are, are changing, mm -hmm. and, and I hope to continue seeing that. Well, one of the good things is, because we do have a community service requirement in, in our communications department, maybe we can find you an opportunity with some of those organizations to get you some experience there, and it's a, a cause that you care very much about. So, mm -hmm. And that's one of the things, Curtis, as I come to you, that I always try to get across to my students about volunteering. I think a lot of times, especially we're in this busyness epidemic here in our country, right? We're, we're always busy. We're always doing something. We're always involved in so many things, especially our students here. And, and you can certainly speak to that. Tell us a little bit more about our student body as a whole in terms of the, you know, the makeup of a lot of our students and what commitments they have. Sure. I think Sarah brought a lot of great points. Not only did she demonstrate that she has causes she's passionate about and she wants to give back, but so many of our students aren't aware about how they can make that happen or what that next step is. So we have a lot of energy, a lot of passion here in Night Nation with our students with everything that they're doing, but they need kind of direction of where to put that energy into. And I just want to share for anyone listening, any other students like Sarah, faculty, staff, or alumni or community members who may be hearing the podcast, uh, reach out to myself or Adrian Thoman because we are now now actively taking submissions for our 2022 CPC Gives Back campaign. And I, Sarah mentioned right off the bat, two or three possible causes that could be 2022's campaign next year. And we want to hear from you on what we should pick and who we should support. So if you're a student or even a faculty staff member and you're feeling lost about what that next step is, talk to myself, talk to Paul Miller, talk to Adrian Thoman, and we can help facilitate that process and find those volunteer outlets to bring that energy and passion to life. And one thing I will also say is career services is also plugged yes, in definitely. as well. So if you're looking, one of the biggest things, Curtis, and, and I know you obviously, <laughs> you know, working in community relations, one of the things that a lot of times people don't look at when they think of volunteering is they think of it as just another another thing. But what I always try to tell people about is, is really finding causes that are central to who you are and spend the time with those organizations. And it doesn't seem like a chore or another thing to do. And I'll give you an example. 
you know, I've been working with several of these organizations throughout the, the Raise the Roof campaign and have enjoyed it. You know, I've uh, done lots of volunteering with Bethesda Mission. Myself and, and people from the Career Crusaders have gone over there m- monthly for about the last six months. And then um, as we record this big event coming up this weekend that we're going to be volunteering in. But that's an organization that I've worked with for years. And it doesn't, to me, it's, it's, it's a thing that I can do to give back to the community. I don't look at it as just one more thing. And trust me, if I can volunteer, so can all of you. You know, we're all busy doing things. And, and I think, Curtis, and I think you'll agree, our students are, are maybe different than other colleges in that they're often maybe working professionals, have, what was this, something like 80, 85% of our students have job commitments. Yeah, around 90% of our students are maintaining at least a part-time job or more while they're earning their Central Penn College degree. And I think you're hitting the nail on the head. Don't just think of it as something else to do. Think of it as an opportunity. Our whole big line now here at Central Penn is opportunities start here. And giving back out in your community isn't just an opportunity to build your resume, but an opportunity to build yourself. And it's not just a networking opportunity, but it's a personal growth opportunity to get out there and just remind yourself that, hey, there's so many people that can use help and earning that central pen degree can help put you on that platform to be able to give back to our community and help those of us around us that need that assistance and just last piece of this one of the things that i do that i look at as one of the greatest things that i do in my life is uh, my son has been involved with the challenger baseball my son's special needs and um, you know he's always struggled with athletics he's it's very difficult for him to understand the rules and and to be able to play in organized sports and we found this organization organization challenger baseball in camp hill about five to six years ago and i've been a a coach ever since and now i'm actually stepping up to being the commissioner of the adult league that's awesome because my son is now 21 so he's aged out of the little league which you can go up to 21 and then then they started an adult league last year and they needed somebody to step up and, and help organize that so i'm stepping up to do that but it's not it's fun yeah i mean to go out there and to see these kids and to for so many of them who struggle to to get maybe even out into the the community and get to meet other people and and you know play sports it's just the, the joy and the passion that these kids have, it's just, it's so touching and it's so, yeah, you know what? In, in the grand scheme of things, it, it, we're busy people, but something like that actually elevates my day. Like, I don't look at it as an extra thing. I look at it, to your point, as an opportunity to get to truly impact other people. And, and to me, that's what I take away the most from volunteering. And I think the main point we're both trying to hit here for anyone listening is to find your passion because this can not only be applied to giving back, but apply that to finding a profession as well. We always always heard that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And that it rings true, whether it's giving back, working, or just life in general. Um, I think we've used some of the lines here before in other podcasts of find that job where you don't want to hit the snooze button when you wake up. You want to pop right up and get there and get to work. Now, Sarah, when you think about and, and sort of reflecting back to some of the volunteer work you you've done how has that maybe changed who you are as a person how has that how has that made you maybe change your perspective I know at first when I was volunteering it felt like my arm was being twisted and that I had to do it that it was something that I felt like I was obligated to do and I know that now as a person it has made me grow it has made me think about different perspectives and it's allowed me to actually enjoy volunteering and actually be happy when volunteering because I know that I'm bringing happiness to other people. Awesome. Well, Curtis, I want to shift back and I want to talk a little bit more about the Raise the Roof campaign. So obviously, um, this has been something that the school has been behind for the last two years. It's something that we're going to be doing annually. And this year, we decided to go with housing insecurity as the cause and developed relationships with a wide variety of groups locally uh, in the seven, if I'm not mistaken, seven surrounding counties that we that serve the vast majority of our students. So tell us just a little bit more. I mean, I know because I was in some of these meetings, but tell us a little bit more about how we decided which organizations in each county to work with. Yeah. So just as you as you mentioned, Paul, our awesome team here made of different staff and faculty members here at the college got together and reviewed um, a number of different submissions. Just like I mentioned, we're taking for 2022. We had the same process last year where we had students, faculty and staff kind of raise their voice and share. Here's what we want you to support. 
we reviewed a couple of different items and, and thinking about what could we really make the most impact with. And uh, as we did some research, we found that housing insecurity and homelessness was really coming to the forefront, the number of nominations that we received. Um, through our process, we then submit to the cabinet to review a couple of different options uh, they review on their end. And it really came down to we were doing some similar things here at the college related around housing. Our housing scholarship was Absolutely. brand new and just got launched. And it just seemed like a perfect fit at the right time to pick the call of housing and security and homelessness for the CPC Gives Back campaign for 2021. What's well, really interesting, too, that we've I think we've all can attest that we've seen lately is is the housing market right now. I mean, even just to rent like your basic two bedroom apartment, sure. 900 to a thousand dollars all around these this area. And so that must make this whole the, the notion of housing and security all that much more important right now because it's so difficult to even get to that point where you're renting your own apartment. It's just, it's it's amazing what's happened to the housing market over the past year. And that's probably making things much worse for so many people trying to, to afford their property. Yeah. Not only on top of just the housing market in general, when you really narrow it down sp- specifically to where we are here at Cumberland County, the fastest growing county in PA, I believe, that just adds on the pressure. That's so much more for people that are looking for affordable housing. Talk to us a little bit about some of the organizations. We, we I don't know if we necessarily have time to go through each and every sure. single one and, and we, we're not excluding anyone. Right. We, we just want to highlight a couple of the organizations that we're working with. Sure. So just to remind our listeners, we're looking at organizations from Adams, York, Lancaster, Lebanon, Cumberland, Dolphin, and Perry counties. And we're looking at organizations like Bethesda Mission, Safe Harbor, um, Lebanon Rescue Mission, uh, South Central Community Action Programs. Uh, We're finding at least one organization in each of those surrounding counties to support because that's where a large majority of our students are coming from, and we want to help their communities back home. And fans of the Nightly News and the Nightly News podcast will also know that a graduate now, Leslie Heimball's Perry County Literacy Council yes. is also one of those. Um, I actually just submitted the paperwork today, and Leslie is officially a Central Penn College graduate. Congratulations, S- Leslie. I know we know she's going to listen. So it's it's wonderful that we've been able to, and that's one of the things I told her in, in sort of one of my parting uh, comments to her was, I never realized. I've known Leslie for years, but I never realized to what extent her organization helped with housing insecurity. And when we were trying to locate uh, an organization in Perry County, it immediately thought to to me, Leslie, is this something that that the Perry County Literacy Council will be a part of? And ever since then, I've just been astonished by the vast amount of services that they have. I don't mean to to hold on one. I know all these organizations are wonderful, but uh, I thought it was really interesting with them specifically because on the surface, you wouldn't necessarily associate housing insecurity with with the literacy council but that's one of the things that they do yeah we had a very similar conversation and she said you know just like you said paul right off the bat just their name sometimes people kind of look away and think they wouldn't take that topic up but they definitely do in full stride and uh while we're on the topic of alumni um through this program i was actually able to learn that uh the executive director for lebanon rescue mission is also a central Penn alum really so by us getting out there and reaching out and giving back it's helping us kind of reconnect with some alumni in the local area that's fantastic i love it well i want to bring it back to sort of the looking back and reflection of the raise the roof now sarah i know that you've been a part of the nightly news and this has been something that we've gotten behind uh, and I know that it, you you definitely gave your all in trying to to help with this. But moving forward, as part of the club, you know, we typically are going to continue being a part of this raise the roof. Uh, and and I just want to put out to you that I appreciate your your past efforts, but your future efforts uh, being a part of, of this. Why do you think for the club it was important for us to get involved with this? I think it's not only important to get our name out, but I also think that it's important to show that. The Nightly News is a giving organization that we truly care about our community and are looking forward to keep going with giving. And and I also think one other thing is many of us are going to volunteer tomorrow, and that gives us a chance to bond in a different way mm-hmm. than typical. I mean, we have a few club meetings and we have you know personal interactions, but we never really get to go out and do that kind of thing together. And Curtis, that was one of the things that I can I can say. So uh, Nightly News teamed up with Career Services this year, and it was just such an amazing experience to have that opportunity to go volunteer with them and really kind of get to know them on a more personal level. Of course, Steve and Kristen, I, I know very 
very well, but I got to meet uh, and, and get to know some of their other staff and also some of the people in the club that that maybe weren't, you know, that I've seen at meetings and things, but I've never gotten to connect with on that level. But I'm going to tell you, Curtis, from my experiences at Bethesda Mission, let me tell you what the, the most rewarding thing was. Every single time we went there, how they made us feel welcome, thankful that we were there. You know, I think we've all volunteered at places before where maybe that wasn't the experience sure. that we got. But I mean, just again, from my experiences with, with Bethesda, that it was just amazing. Every person thanked us for being there. Always so polite and kind. I mean, it really made us feel welcome. Yeah, it just makes that day so much more worthwhile and really wants you to bring that energy for those people that need it. Absolutely. So uh, in our last couple minutes here, let's talk a bit more about where we're at. What are some of the numbers? That's what we want to hear. Now, I, I, I will say that when we're recording this, Curtis, I'm sure, still has some things to tally. So, I mean, I don't want to necessarily put you on the spot and to announce the final, final tallies here. But give us a sense of where we are in comparison to the goals that we had for ourselves. Yeah, we are just about wrapped up with the tallying. So I'll give you just a broad spectrum of the numbers. Uh, for anyone listening that is part of the CPC Gives Back competition, where your club, like Paul Miller's club, uh, Nightly News, and uh, Career Services combining as the Career Crusaders, they've been earning points over the last nine months. We will be announcing next week the winning team point-wise for the entire competition, so we're excited to share that. Goal-wise this year, we had three goals, raising monetary funds, uh, collecting everyday household care type items, and providing service hours back to seven local area organizations. So uh, I'm very excited to share that we have uh, given back over 300 hours of service. That's amazing. We have collected over 5,700 household care items, and we've uh, collected over $7,600 in monetary donations. So uh, this next week, uh, we'll be going out to the seven local charities, uh, dropping off any uh, remaining items that have been collected, and presenting a check with a donation. So each charity or organization will be receiving around eleven, just under $1,100 uh, this holiday season. So, you know, kudos and thank you so much to each and every person, student, faculty, staff member, alumni, community member, whomever else may be on the list or metric we want to mention. Just thank you so much for your support. The thing that gets me, look, the items, the money, that's great. But the, the service this year, sure, uh, we we certainly eclipsed last year's service number. Yeah, obviously we had a little bit longer to do that, and we had a little bit more accessibility this year. It was a little tricky last year because of the pandemic. Some right. places weren't letting people in. But gosh, Curtis, this is just when I talk to people about finding a job that they they have passion in. This has got to be just amazing for you to be able to be the representative for the college. Sort of, you know, you're one of the main people who's driven this the whole time. It's got to feel great for you to go to these organizations, meet them, talk to them, and give them this large donation. It's probably something that that is going to go to such great, probably something that's going to go to great use this holiday season for, for many local organizations and the families and, and individuals who they serve. So how does that feel for you? when you get to walk up and, and shake their hand and, and really tell them how important this was to us as an institution. Yeah, I mean, it's really so much more than just raising the money and, and giving it to the people in need. That is the main point. But when you get ready to shake that hand, a lot of things are going through your mind in the sense of everything that led to that point. Not only did we raise the money to help those in need, but we're getting our students connected with local area organizations for internships and possible jobs and getting them and letting them know and helping them learn what it means to give back and help them grow as a member of our society. It's about meeting alumni, like I just mentioned, at these organizations where maybe we weren't aware that we have a leader right in our area doing this type of good every single day. Or Leslie as well out there working right up the road in Perry County. Uh, there's just so many other positive attributes to this type of program that the college is doing that, yes, first and foremost, we're helping you back to the, to the community, but it's helping kind of ingrain ourselves a little bit more and kind of getting in the trenches a little bit deeper with these organizations, the community, and working that little bit harder to help everything worthwhile and make it happen. So um, I know we mentioned uh, personal connection. I really love this year's campaign, especially because personally, uh, my family um, utilized some services similar to what we're assisting with. And we're going back to our conversation of passion, mm -hmm. and it's not just a job. So yeah, you hit the nail on the head. There's many positive things that go through your mind once this wraps up. 
I love what I do because I feel that I get to have an impact on people, but I guarantee you feel the same way. I don't want to speak for you, but I know you very well. Yeah. And I know that this, like, lightly, the fact that you're you're doing this for these organizations and you're representing the college out in the community and making these connections. Curtis, I just got to give you all the credit in the world. I mean, yes. We're we, on a team. Don't give me have, all the credit We here. have a good team, <laughs> and I don't want to downplay our team. But really, man, it's you that that's that's orchestrating all of this, and I just want to thank you not only from from myself, but certainly from the college. I mean, I understand that this is your job, but you don't look at it that way. You look at it and you take it very seriously, and you take you know the opportunity to meet these individuals, make these relationships. You take that so seriously, and, and that's not everybody would do that in your position. You know, you look at it as more than a job. Sure, and I think that that's unbelievably commendable, and I just want to thank you very much. Well, thank you, Paul, and I think it really just it comes full circle because with nightly news you know it's more than a job for you and we see the passion that you put into it and i think at the end of the day it really comes back to the mission and the reason why we're here it's our loyalty to our students like sarah this is why we're here that positivity that we're not just clocking in and clocking out we are stepping here on campus or logging in virtually online for a class whatever it may be because of our mission for our students this is here this is who we're here to support and this is just one of the many ways we can help them learn and grow personally and professionally inside and outside the classroom it's hard to be in the pers- in the same room with Curtis, Sarah, <laughs> and not be inspired, isn't it? It really is. Like he's really amazing. I know that he's spoken to one of my classes before and it really left me wanting to go and give back right then and then I was just like, "Wait, Sarah, you you still got things that you have to do." Well, hold on to that energy for 2022 <laughs> when we get our new campaign and we will gladly find some outlets for you. Thank you guys so much. And there are plenty of places um, Curtis has been sharing the message about nominations being open for the cause for next year. So please uh, or I'm sure you could even reach directly out to Curtis Volker via email. I can put his email along with his podcast. Well, Curtis, uh, I want to have you back when we make this decision about who we're going to support next year. Sure. So we'll have you back here in in a couple of months to when we make that decision and talk more about how people can get involved. But as we look back and reflect on the Raise the Roof 2021 campaign, what is there to say? But is this is just an unbelievable success for the college. Yeah. And the only other thing to say is, again, thank you to every single person who supported for the cause, whether it was sharing on social media or making a donation or facing some of the colder weather for a drive up drop off. Uh, You know, there's opportunities abound. So thank you so much to everyone listening who helped out. Well, as always, it is such a pleasure. This will be our final podcast of the year. So we'll be checking back with you in the uh, in the new year. But Sarah, I just pulled you off the street literally to come in here. So I just thank you for your time. And I appreciate your reflection on your own experiences. Of course. And Curtis, what more can I say? But thank you for what you do. And I'm looking forward to going to Bethesda Mission for the check drop off next week. And if there's anything I can do to help you with that, please let me know. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this part of the Nightly News Podcast. Stay tuned. Jamie Harmon will give you our Fall 21 Nightly News Brief when we return. This is Norman Geary, news correspondent. Thank you for listening to the Nightly News Podcast, the voice of the nights. This is Nightly News correspondent Jamie Harmon with a fall 2021 episode of the Nightly News Brief. This news podcast features audio versions of stories from our student reporters, articles by Manny Vidal, Greg Colburn, Jamie Harmon, Sarah Whitmire, and Professor Michael Lear Olympi are featured on today's episode. At 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning earlier this term, with the temperature steady at 35 degrees, the Central Penn College baseball team with head coach Robert Stern showed up to help some workers remove fencing from around the Coons Park main baseball field in Linglestown, Lower Paxton Township. When they entered the field, they saw the grass was frozen, so the work was going to be a little more complicated than they had thought. They explained to the first workers who had come to replace the fences how to remove the metal chain link mesh and how the machines that remove the bolts that reinforce the fences work. The chain link sections were attached to the wood post. In addition, the workers gave some of the players metal cutting scissors to snip the mesh into small portions to roll them up and put into place. Workers were grateful the folks from Central Penn were there. Robert Stern, head coach of the Knights baseball team, said, quote, In this moment, they needed our help with the fence because in the future we can use the park for practices and games, end quote. As the morning warmed a bit, More workers arrived. Thanks to the support, it took less time to replace the metal fences than the original contingent believed it would just a couple hours earlier. 
Central Penn baseball player Stephen Armstrong said, quote, I started playing baseball when I was younger. It is good to do this for the community to show to others what we are able to do, end quote. The Colleges Against Cancer Club and its advisor, Kristen Fike, helped celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month by hosting brawls across campus last Thursday afternoon to support the Feel Your Boobies campaign with hopes of educating young women on the importance of breast self-exams. Students, faculty, and staff gathered along Henzies Bridge in Summerdale to learn more about the importance of breast cancer awareness and breast exams young women can do themselves. Jenna Lawson, age 42, of Harrisburg, a breast cancer survivor, spoke regarding the need for weekly self-checkups for women under the age of 40 and her involvement with the Feel Your Boobies Foundation during her own breast cancer journey. She also mentioned support from the American Cancer Society's Making Strides Against Breast Cancer of South Central PA and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. The Feel Your Boobies Foundation's goal is to educate young women on the importance of breast self-exams. The foundation helps women know how to do the exams, when to do the exams, and what to look for. According to the American Cancer Society, one in eight women will develop breast cancer. Kristen Fike, advisor to the Colleges Against Cancer Club, said, quote, Because some women are too young to get screenings, they really need to have that self-awareness on their own to be doing self-breast exams. End quote. Many students stop to show support and spread awareness of the importance of the prevention of breast cancer. Central Penn students and employees collected over 40 brawls for the event. The brawls were hung on the bridge and were donated to the local shelter for women in need. The Office of Student Engagement welcomed to campus in November two baby kangaroos from Aldinger Farms, Halifax, as a way for students to have a unique experience. Aldinger Farms has five kangaroos that the private farm takes to local organizations for morale-building events. The baby kangaroos, known as Joey's, visited UPMC and Cumberland Goodwill EMS in the recent months. Matt Aldinger, owner of Aldinger Farms, bought two kangaroos and has helped to breed three babies, two of which visited the college Friday. Pearl is the female Joey and Duncan is the male. Aldinger shared that two own kangaroos, the farm must have a permit from the state. Kangaroos live between 10 and 20 years and hail from Australia. Female kangaroos are much smaller than males as male kangaroos often weigh more than 200 pounds, while females typically weigh under 100 pounds. Aldinger said, Kangaroos are able to withstand the cold, something many people ask about. He pointed out that kangaroos, much like people, do not prefer the cold, but can live in colder temperatures. According to Aldinger, adult kangaroos often become silently aggressive, especially in the wild, but baby kangaroos are often quite docile and receptive to being held and played with. The joeys feed from milk bottles, while adult kangaroos typically feed on a diet of bread, apples, and carrots. Sometimes you get a chance to step back in time. Just ask Professor Paul Miller. Recently, he revisited Butler Radio Network, home to WISR, WBUT, and WLER, the rock station of 97.7 FM in western Pennsylvania, where he interned in 2003 as an undergraduate at Slippery Rock University. The reason for his trip? He stopped in to say hi to one of his students, Crystal Golden, who was following in his footsteps. Professor Miller said, quote, I was very excited about her interning at the same place I did. I highly encouraged her to apply there and make sure that she could do an early internship based on the time frame that we had for her, end quote. She was finishing up her internship working with some of the same station personnel that had trained Miller nearly two decades before. He was glad to reconnect with his mentors. Miller went on to say, quote, To have Crystal there was so special. All along, I knew that I wanted to go back to the site, especially when I found out that Vicki Hinterberger and Bob Cup, my two supervisors, were still there nearly 20 years later, end quote. For her part, Golden admits that she had some big shoes to fill. She said, quote, I'm not going to lie. At first, it was kind of intimidating to have my internship at the same station as Professor Miller. I think there's a lot of pressure working and going into something that someone else, especially your professor, has worked or done before. But at the same time, it was really fun. End quote. Golden is an online student in Central Penn's corporate communications program. 
She is on target to graduate in the spring. Until December 9th, the Colleges Against Cancer Club will be accepting donations of children's pajamas for the patients in Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital in honor of a young boy named Harrison who beat childhood cancer. This is the third year in a row the club has collected pajamas. This year's campaign began on November 1st. With Christmas just around the corner, many people are looking for the opportunity to give to a good cause and, according to Helen Fishman, Harrison's mother, pajamas were important during the time he spent in the hospital, so she wants to give the same gift that helped her son during the trying stays at the facility. Fishman said, quote, I cannot express to you how important pajamas were to me. As soon as Harrison was removed from the ventilator, the first thing I did after holding him was put him in pajamas. However, we could possibly go through five or six pajama changes in a day. Had it not been for the donations of pajamas, Harrison would not have had pajamas to bridge the gap, end quote. Pajama donations must be new clothing and have tags and sizes from infant to adult for patients ranging from babies to teenagers to accommodate for all ages. The pajamas will be delivered to Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital on December 10th, a week before Harrison's sixth birthday. To donate, Use the bins that the Colleges Against Cancer has placed in ATEC and in Bollinger and Milano Halls. Communication students recently toured PA Media Group's Penn Studios. The tour showed off and explained the outfit's high-tech video studios and their capabilities. One large room, the studio in which most video productions are created, looked very much the part. Even though technology has shrunk, the size of cameras and added advanced display monitors and computers. The all-black interior studio sports sleek sound-tight walls, floors, and ceiling. It features an enormous green screen, a background that allows video effects such as displays of maps and graphics. Makloff showed and demonstrated the Infinity Green Screen, one of the high-end products that Penn Studio offers its clients. Infinity means the screen's a bit like an infinity exercise pool in that their screen's edges and corners are smooth, rounded over, sharp edges, such as corners where walls meet. So those features won't show up in a video. Macloff and Penn Studios Associates have been working on Cheers PA, a series of features on Pennsylvania breweries and wineries across the Commonwealth and interesting spots tourists and locals can explore near them. Earlier this year, corporate communications major Janelle Dulac, president of the Nightly News Media Club, completed an internship at Penn Studios, where she pitched in on the production of some of the spots. Dulac also finished a video while at Penn Studios on local drag queen entertainer and person about town, Betty Whitecastle. The short documentary appeared on Penn Live. This has been Nightly News correspondent Jamie Harmon, with the fall 2021 episode of the Nightly News Brief.